was 12 years old and I used to love riding horses. Um, and I want to tell you first how I experienced my near death experience. I used to ride English lessons, but this was my first Western lesson. And apparently they didn't uh, tighten the cinch enough and I slipped and was kicked in the head by a horse. My parents uh, were then, they came to the hospital, they sat at my bedside, my mother never left. And the doctors told them that I was in a coma. I was moved to a secondary hospital in Waco because my accident happened in Hillsborough and they didn't have the neurological team to work on me. So they sent me to Waco and they told my parents that, um, that it, it didn't look good. If I woke up, I would likely be paralyzed for life and would have severe brain damage because of, in the state of Texas at the time, only one other person had survived that type of head injury and uh, she was paralyzed for, for life. But what they started to do while I was in the coma was the doctors encouraged them to play um, old movies at my side, movies that would stimulate my mind, talk to me, sing to me. And as, as they started to play movies, I had an experience of my own. So the, the coma, the darkness of the coma was really nothingness. There was no time or sound. There was nothing, nothing there for me that I remember because people often ask me that. But I do remember what happened to me next. <laughs> and that was an experience that is so vivid and so powerful and so beautiful that I will never forget it. And I'm sure about that. So at some point during the coma, I was transported to a raft. And this is very different than the white light that most people experience. But I was on a raft as my child self in my child body. And across from me, I saw Jesus. And to the left was a man that was thin, young, bald, with long brown robes that went down to his feet. So I was there in this place and I felt completely protected, completely at home, completely loved. Come absolute loving energy there. The raft was wooden. I was on kind of a pink cloud and not much happened at this point, but later I got to come back and communicate with, with these beautiful beings and these beautiful masters. So at some point from that place, I was transported into a place of light and color. And this is where it really comes through, where we experience this power that everyone else has has noticed and been a part of. I was surrounded by love. It was like I had come home. It was peaceful and beautiful and light. There were colors that I'd never seen before, but they were vibrant and beautiful. I got a glimpse of them. And then I heard music and the music was so crucial to this experience because there's a music theme throughout the entire thing that led me to go into music therapy. So I heard the music, I saw the colors, I saw the light and then I felt the light. I felt the love. And there was this beautiful blanket of love that just wrapped around me. And it wasn't, I didn't have a body in this place. I was just there, right? No body, no time, no nothing, no language, no thoughts. I just became the love. And it was so overwhelmingly beautiful. And I just melted into it. It went into every cell, every pore, every part of me just became part of the collective. Or maybe I was reunited with the memory that we are all part of the collective. In any case, I was there, I felt it. And for, for some time I experienced that. I don't know if it was a day or a million years, but I was then taken back to the raft and I had a communication, a communication and a conversation through my mind with Jesus about what was to come next. And I wanna tell you this because I wanna highlight some of the messages that I received because they might be relative to you, they might be interesting to you and they have shaped and formed my entire life since then. So back on the raft, everything became apparent to me. I knew so much all at one time. There was this great knowing about me. And one of those messages was that we are all perfect. <laughs> we are all perfect as we are. There's nothing wrong with us. We are meant to be who we are. And there is no, nothing wrong. Every experience you have in life, every experience you've had is meant to be a part of you and lead you to where you are and where you become. And you, because you are 
perfect are your best teacher. And there's no one else that can answer your questions the way that you can. There's no one else that can tell you what you need to know. But we lose sight of the fact that we have that knowledge within us and that we hold source energy and divine energy within. So I want to backtrack a little bit to my near-death experience to when I actually woke up. I received many more messages and I'm going to talk about those today. I'm going to go into those in more detail. But after I received all the information that was given to me and shown the path of my family and shown what would happen if I chose to stay versus come back to earth, Jesus asked me to stay in heaven, stay in this place, this connection to love, or if I wanted to return to earth and live live my life and and teach through the lessons that i have received and i remember a, a part of me thinking wow i'm connected i want to stay i love it it's beautiful this is amazing and then i knew that living is a gift living is a gift and i could do so much with my life and that everybody on earth has a purpose and we all have meaning and it's absolutely the most incredible gift that we get to come here and do that because what we can do for others is the most impactful thing that we will ever be able to experience and the fact that we can help others to grow to the place of connecting to source that is a gift so i remember I remember making that choice and I was shown other things and I talk about that in, in another story about the other things that I was shown about my family's lives. But when I made the choice to live, I remember feeling completely overwhelmed with gratitude that I got the chance, the chance to go back. And my heart just swelled and there was this massive amount of love and gratitude. And I felt like I figuratively fell on my knees thanking them. And I remember making a vow at that moment. I remember saying and communicating through my mind, if I go back, I will use music for healing and I will help other people and I will give thanks every night, every night to source energy to God that I am here and that I get to go back. And it was one of the most beautiful and vivid memories of my whole life. And though I lost all my memories before my near-death experience, I lost them all. I will remember that experience more than anything else I've experienced here. And at the moment that I made the choice and I gave gratitude and I made that vow, I went back into darkness, but it wasn't a scary darkness or a sad darkness. It was the darkness of the coma and of awakening. And in that place, I saw a music staff in the distance, in the darkness, and it was colorful and rainbow and each note had a different color and as it moved on the staff i could see the music notes moving but couldn't hear the music but i watched the staff get bigger and bigger and the animated notes just moving along the staff until finally it kind of went from this tiny little image to right into my head and then disappeared behind me and at that moment, it was darkness again, but there was a tiny pinprick of light. I kind of point down and to the right a little bit, tiny, tiny fragment of light. It, it feels like it was light, but in reality, it was sound. And it was so inaudible, I could barely hear it. I didn't know if I really heard anything. And what I realize now is that I was above then moving in to connect back into my human form. And what I was hearing was the music that was played in a movie at my bedside, classical, mu classical music, Tchaikovsky. And I focused so hard on that sound. It was so faint and so difficult to connect. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And you think about all the physical feats you've done and all the things you've done. I mean, I've tried lots of things. This was very hard. It took every bit of my spiritual strength to connect to that sound. And it got louder and louder and louder until it was booming in my head, booming. And then the sound went away and I opened my eyes and I was in the ICU in this hospital in Waco and I had woken up from a coma. And I remember my parents weren't there. The nurse came over and, and I remember being told it's a miracle. 
that you're that you're awake that you're alive is a miracle so i'm going to share my screen now and show you what i looked like when i woke up from the coma um i came out to music and this was me i was 12 years old i had braces people had brought me stuffed animals i had a black eye i was kicked in the temple directly in the temple and when i came out i started to walk and talk and it was what they said, a miracle. So from that point on, I dedicated my life to healing people with music because I knew that that is why I'm here. I threw myself into music through my recovery. I you know, used it as a tool to help me express myself and move into different states of awareness. But then I started to recognize and notice the messages that were coming through and continued to come through. I know that I came back with light beings and angels that communicated with me and helped me because I could see them and I could sense them. And now I work with them to help them give messages or help others move into their higher self. And that has been a huge part of my work. But what I've come to know is that it's music is one way of connecting to source, but there are multiple ways of doing that. And it all comes down to raising our frequency. So now I use that. So when I talked early about you being perfect and connecting to your higher self, I want to go into how to do that because it's really easier than people think. You can listen to music, you can meditate, you can do breath work, you can raise your frequency through vibration, through natural plant medicine like essential oils that are high frequency. You can give yourself experiences of connecting to higher self by getting out of your thinking mind or having someone help you to move into that space, which is what I do, is helping people move into that space of connecting to the higher self so that they re remember, so that we remember. And many of you may have had an experience like this on your own, and I may be preaching to the choir, right? But I just want to reiterate that that is one huge message to take forward as you start to heal because real true healing comes through surrender. I might, I have Lyme disease and I healed from a head injury and I've been through experiences in my life that I never thought that I would go through. And the only thing that got me through was remembering this experience and the messages that came through. Another thing I want to remind everyone of is that we all, we all are constantly surrounded by loving, healing energy, constantly. Just as I was in that place in heaven and was surrounded by this light and this love and became the love, you are surrounded by love. You are surrounded by light. And it's so easy to get caught in the mind and believe what the mind is thinking and forget that we are spiritual beings that are living a human existence. And I think that it's really important and you don't need to see them like I do to know that they're there because they give you validation and they give you signs and they want you to know. And this energy is constantly available for us. You also hold the same love and light inside your very heart, inside your being. You can tap into your divine light and love by imagining the light within your heart by releasing to that. And your body energy is only a fragment of your energy. Your light body actually extends above you in a way that you could never imagine. Like we are only a tiny bit of our huge light, larger presence and high and higher energy and presence. You can feel this by surrendering. And what I mean by surrendering has to do with acts that you do in your life. So for me, when I surrender to gratitude and I think of something that I'm absolutely powerfully connected and grateful for, there is no room for anything else. And that light just becomes part of me and part of who I am. And I know that you two have had that experience. If you surrender to gratitude, how do you find meaning in your life and your situation? How do you find this connection to self? And this one is where there is gratitude, there is no room for negativity. When you're truly feeling the heart expand with gratitude, all else is gone. There's nothing else. So that's one way. Recognize your perfection, which means letting go of negative self-talk. This is a really big thing. I was told in this place, one of the many messages I received was that we create our reality. Well, how do we do that? It's through our thoughts. We have human thoughts that are not in alignment with our spiritual 
not in, a, in, in alignment. But what happens is we tell ourselves these thoughts and we believe them as if they're true, but they're not, they're just thoughts. And people ask me, well, what, how do I know if a thought is a thought or if it's a spiritual message? Now, this is for those of you who are intuitive, right? So many people will say, you know, I want to release my thoughts, but what if it's a message from the universe that I need to connect with or it's a message from source? My answer to that is that, is that if it holds emotion, and this is how I see it, so please take it as you see it, but if it holds emotion, it is a thought. If it holds fear, it is a thought. It is not a message. Because when I receive messages from beyond and source energy and divine or angels or light beings, it comes through as a message without any, it's like a void. It's like, it, it comes through with a very matter of fact message and that's it, or I'm shown a picture, but there's no emotion until I attach emotion to it later. So that's one way of knowing. The other thing that you can do that I've learned to do through this and that I learned kind of the moment I came back from the other side, even before I went to Naropa, was that when a thought comes into my mind that is not something that I want to manifest or that I want to acknowledge or that I want to bring into my existence, I imagine it like a butterfly just moving out of my head. And sometimes with my kids, when I'm in the car and I get a thought and I'm like worried about traffic or something, or I'm feeling negative, I will actually roll down the window and send my thoughts out the windows. So they've seen me do that. And I've done that since I woke up from the coma because that was a huge part of what I learned. The other thing that I learned, um, learned about thoughts is that in that place of connection, when we really are in source energy and connected to that light and love and divine loving place, things that we care about on earth did not matter as much. <laughs> like how we're going to get our work done, what we're doing and you know, who said what doesn't matter. It's all judgment. Judgment is not, there's no place for that when we're there, right? So I've learned and I've practiced and it is a continual practice to take that out of my mind so that we constantly we aren't thinking about things that don't matter we think oh i'll get an answer to that when when i need it when i connect with source again i will get that answer and i don't need to think about it and perseverate it on now because our thoughts create reality right how many things are we dealing with in this world now that we never thought possible we are dealing with phones, right? Boxes where we can see people over imaginary airwaves that live across the world. If we told each other that 50 years ago, no one would have ever believed it. But look at what we can manifest. That's another message that I received on the other side. We have no idea what we are capable of manifesting as humans. We have no concept because again, we're thinking in our human mind rather than being in alignment and surrendering to our higher self. And if we do surrender to our higher self and we live in that energy, we can create more than we ever thought possible, ever thought. We can change everything in a heartbeat and we are. We are doing that now, whether we know it or not, many light beings are awakening now and doing work that they don't even realize that they are. So how many things, right? How many things can we make possible? Now let's talk about frequency. Frequency comes through in so many ways. It comes through the thoughts that you think. It comes through what you've listened to, what you entertain, and it comes through how much you will allow fear to take a hold in your life. And right now, during this time, there is so much fear around you. It's very easy to get caught up in it. It's very easy to believe it. It's very easy to allow that to be your existence. But I challenge you. I challenge you to turn off the news. I mean, I know it sounds wild, but I challenge you to sit in your existence and your presence and call in your own light and your own higher self and live in the positivity because that is what is going to change our frequency as a whole. And what we've already done through this reset, through this pandemic now, is we have reset the planet and the planet's frequency has, a, has risen to meet us and to raise us up. And I'll talk about that more later, but releasing thoughts in your head, the continual outpouring of love, continual outpouring of love was another huge message on the other side. So I remember that even though our thoughts didn't matter, people mattered. And then they told me when I communicated, all this message just came through. They just came into my being. I did, they didn't tell me these things. I just knew them in this place. That relationships matter, people matter, outpouring of love. So when we judge others or when we 
criticize or when we speak negatively, even the smallest negative thing, right? It removes that outpouring of love that we can give. And if we were to take those thoughts out and send them out and just pour love out to people, that would change everything for all of us. And I remember learning that. So every interaction, everything that we do, um, loving people, switching to humor if we need to, releasing the thoughts that carry judgment or negativity will not drain us. If you're constantly loving people, people worry that it will drain us, but no, it actually refuels us. Connect with this powerful light within you that surrounds you, that is available to all of us. And you will receive the message that I received, which is that we are light, we are love, and we all have purpose, and we all have meaning. So, um, so I want to speak about some things that I do every day that really help me to connect and to release and to surrender and trust. Surrender and trust. Those are the two things to come away with today. Another thing I wanted to talk about that I want to come back to about my near-death experience is the man in the brown robes on my left side because I know that some of you are wondering who that was. And though I didn't know who he was at the time, he was there. He didn't communicate with me. He has since communicated with me. And so Jesus has come back to me as well as other ascended masters. But um, when he was there, I felt protected and loved. Like, like he was a loving kind of a, just a loving protective energy, right? When I went to Naropa, which is a Buddhist university in Boulder, I went, it's deeply rooted in, um, meditation and contemplative practices and it was founded by the Dalai Lama. I knew nothing of Buddhism before I went to Naropa other than the big Buddha, you know, that we see in the pictures. When I arrived in Naropa to go to one of my meditation classes, I saw a depiction of a young, thin, bald Buddha in brown robes on one of the pictures or paintings, maybe in a book or I think it was on a wall actually. And I recognized instantly that that was the man from my near-death experience. That was the, the energy that was with me while Jesus was, a, a, was across from me. And I remember realizing that full circle, this was validation that I needed to be in this realm and with the school because another message that I received on the other side is that it's all love. It's all love by a different name. And I know that that is you know, controversial to some, but it's the message that I received and what I choose to adopt and take on because I felt it and I knew it. And I know that there is no room for judgment when there is that love around. So I wanted to bring light and tell everyone that that is, that is who I saw in the near-death experience. And I wanted to talk about the music because people ask me about that a lot too. The music that I woke up to that woke me from a coma was Tchaikovsky. My dad had decided that day that he wanted to play my favorite childhood movie at my coma bedside and in the ICU. And the movie was Sleeping Beauty. And Sleeping Beauty is 90% from what I understand and what I've read, about 90% music. It's all based on the Sleeping Beauty sleep. Sweet by Tchaikovsky, which is a which is a ballet, and the um, and it's a composition. It's beautiful. And when I woke up from the coma, that's the music that was playing, and that is what woke me. And since then, I've worked with head injured clients often with music, and I have tried to bring that music back because it's what I know that connects to the mind. So I wanted to make sure that I spoke to that as well. The other things I have here are to remember that we can heal the emotional body by surrendering and trusting, but also through forgiveness, because forgiveness is another, just like gratitude, that can take us into this place of love and take us into this place of connection to our higher self, which is really what I believe it's all about. You can call it love. You can call it higher self. You can call it the divine source, God. It really is about having that constant practice in your life in order to trust and give way to that. So um, about a year ago, when actually, ironically, all this kind of came to a point together, I received the books and um, the guidance from St. Germain and Ascended Masters and my angels and from all of you at the IANS conference last year. Um, when I received these books, I, I went home the next day and my husband of 20 years, 19 years, told me he wanted a divorce. <laughs> and it so shocked me and surprised me because we have three children. 
that I really broke down and lost my ground. But, and um, I read a meditation and it had me moving into light, just like the light of heaven. And I was taken into this place of being reconnected with the light and I received the message that you don't need love from one person to know that you are loved. 